Hi everyone! In this video, I'm going to answer some of the most frequently asked questions on this channel. The questions I'm going to answer today include what laptop should I get for programming? Uh, do you have any advice on getting a software engineer job at Google? By the way, the reason I get this question a lot is because I used to work there. And how old are you? So let's get started. Okay, so first of all, what laptop should you get for programming? Well, to answer that question, you know, you need to first think about uh, Mac versus Windows. And in my opinion, I don't think it matters that much which one you get. You know, it really depends on your budget and preferences and everything. Uh, for me personally, I like a Mac more just because I think it's easier to use. But I know that, you know, some other people like Windows more too. And there's always an option of running, you know, Windows on a Mac or uh, running Linux on a Windows-based computer or a Mac-based computer too. So I think any one of those configurations is fine. Uh, I think pretty much the only time you need to get a Mac and not Windows is when you want to develop iOS apps. So most people use Xcode to develop iOS apps and it only works on Mac. So if that's not the case for you, I think uh, getting either Mac or Windows is just fine. Now, what about hardware? Well, the criteria I would personally use is I would look for something uh, that's light, portable, and affordable. I'd also look for something that's, you know, built well enough so it doesn't break easily. Uh, personally, I recommend MacBook Air because, you know, it's super light and portable and it's fast enough for most situations. I think the only thing with MacBook Air is that it's a little bit, you know, expensive. It's about 1000 to 1200 US dollars when I checked it last time. Um, and when you're choosing a MacBook Air, I think getting 128 gigabytes of storage is probably okay. But, you know, it might be a little bit too tight. So if you can afford it, you should get the 256 gigabytes one. Now, personally, I actually don't use a MacBook Air. I use a MacBook Pro. And the reason I got this one is mostly because I wanted to do, you know, video and photo editing on this one because it has more resolution and it's a little bit faster. But I think for programming, like for most situations, MacBook Air is fast enough. Okay, what if you're looking for a Windows-based laptop instead? Well, I'm not too familiar with Windows-based laptops, so I asked my you know, Twitter and LinkedIn followers about this, and they gave me three recommendations. Uh, they are Lenovo ThinkPad series, uh, that's about 600 US dollars and up on Amazon, and Dell XPS series, that's about 800 US dollars and up, and Asus ZenBook series, which is about 700 US dollars and up. Another one that's also popular for programmers is Microsoft Surface Book 2, but it's a lot more expensive. It's about 1200 US dollars. But what if you're looking for a cheaper laptop? Well, I also asked my followers about this and I got two suggestions for this. The first one is Lenovo ThinkPad 320, which is about $400 on Amazon. And another suggestion I got is that you can just get a Chromebook and install Linux on it. So this one I found is about $200 with four gigabytes of RAM on Amazon. Okay, next question. Uh, do you have any advice on getting a software engineer job at Google? Well, yes, and I actually wrote an entire article about this. And in this article, the argument I made is that there are six steps for getting a software engineer job, uh, not just at Google, but also at other top tech companies like uh, Facebook, Microsoft, and Amazon. So the first uh, three steps of these are something I already talked about on this channel in my video about how to learn to code. Uh, basically, learn to code if you haven't yet, work on a few personal projects, and then get your first programming job or internship. And after that, step number four is learn data structures and algorithms. Uh, I have a series of seven videos on this topic on this channel. And I also, I also have another video about additional resources you can use to learn more on this topic. So I'm going to put links to both of them in the description. And step five is preparing for coding interviews. Uh, basically, just use resources like, you know, lead code and cracking the coding interview, and then practice as much as possible, ideally with your friends. So, you know, do a lot of mock interviews with your friends. And step six is apply. Um, I also have another video about you know, four best ways to apply for software engineer jobs. So I'm gonna put a link to that in the description too. Okay, and there are a few common questions I get a lot about getting a job at Google and you know, other top tech companies. The first one is, do I need to get a computer science degree? 
Well, the short answer is no. You know, I don't have a computer science degree, but I was still able to get a software engineer job there. And the second question is, do I need to go to a top university like you know, MIT, Stanford, Carnegie Mellon, etc.? Well, the short answer is no again. You know, it probably helps to go to one of those universities to get the initial phone screen interview. But after that, you know, what matters a lot more is your performance, your performance on the interview itself. And the third question I get a lot is, do I need to have a high GPA to get a job there? Well, the short answer is no again. You know, again, it probably helps a little bit for getting the initial interview, but after that, probably doesn't matter that much. Okay, so when I list these things, you know, you might say, what do I need then to get a job at Google? Well, there are basically only three things uh, that you need. The first one is, you know, strong problem solving and coding skills. The second one is a solid base in computer science fundamentals, including data structures and algorithms. And the third one is, you know, interesting projects and interesting, uh, hopefully some work experience to show on your resume. And, you know, that's basically all you need. Uh, you might say, you know, that's a little bit too simplistic, but it's just true based on my personal experience and based on what I read uh, out there. Okay, the next question, um, how old are you? You know, for me, I kind of find it funny uh, that I get this question a lot, but I'm currently 26 years old. And, you know, if you're curious about my birthday, there's actually a super easy way to remember it. It's just two to the power of 10. Yeah, I know it's a little bit nerdy, but just in case that's not nerdy enough for you, you can just run this Python code to find my birthday. Okay, the last question. Uh, what's the best way to contact you? Well, for me, the best way is either Instagram or Twitter. You know, I do respond on uh, my Facebook page sometimes when I get messages there, but it's just that, you know, it's usually much easier for me to use uh, Twitter and Instagram. But actually, I might not be able to respond to, you know, everything in the future just because I've been getting a lot of, you know, messages and tweets recently. Uh, so on Instagram alone, I have like 40 unread messages. And, you know, I'm going to do my best to respond to everything, but it just might not be feasible in the future. So actually to mitigate this issue a little bit, I decided to set up a subreddit for you guys to, you know, sort of ask each other questions. Uh, the idea I have for this is if you ask questions there and if I can answer them, that's great. But if I can't, you know, hopefully other people will be able to sort of jump in and then provide their own, you know, thoughts and answers. I'm not sure how it's going to go, but hopefully, you know, this will be a place where people will be able to, you know, help each other with any programming related questions. So I'm going to put a link to that in the description just in case you want to check it out. Okay, that's it for this video. And actually, this video is probably going to be my last video before my vacation. You know, like I said in uh, some of my other videos, I'm planning to travel in Japan for about one month and I'm planning to move to Toronto after that. I'm also planning to, you know, make some travel videos while I'm in Japan, which I'm going to post on my other channel called HeyYK. Anyway, thank you as always for watching my videos. You know, I really can't do this without you guys and uh, I appreciate, you know, all the comments and uh, messages I get. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video.